Hey, welcome back to another episode of Learning CSS. In this episode, we're going to be talking about float, display, and position properties. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And the first one that we're going to cover is floating. And floating allows us to align elements next to each other. So let me go ahead and give you an example of this by duplicating our current box. And I'm going to duplicate these styles. And maybe I'll just give this a blue border. And I need to change this to box two. So if I reload that, you can see that this box actually shows up below the other box. And this is because we are not floating any of the elements and they're display blocks, so they are set to display the full width. So let me go ahead and just maximize this window. And I'm going to open up my developer tools. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually make these items next to each other. And if I were to select this box, we can actually use a property called float. And I can say that I want this box to float to the left. So since we are floating to the left, you can see that it actually kind of makes the other box move up and then it's kind of missed up the text right here. But let's go ahead and make the second box float left and you'll see that it shows up right on top of each other. And you'll notice that we also have this link because this link is in line. So this link is actually floating to the left of all of these. So we have float left for the box, float left, and then the A link is in line, so that's why it's showing up right here. So if we were to change this link to be display block, it's going to take up the whole width, and then it's going to break a new line. So we're gonna cover more about all the different properties of display, but for now, I just wanted to show you that you can float one box on top of the other. And then what we could also do is we could say that maybe box two, we wanted this to float to the right. So now you can see that it is floating to the right. So we can actually align these items right next to each other by using the float property. And you might see this actually in a lot of cases where maybe you'll have three columns of data. So typically what we would have is we would have a width of 30%, 30%, 30%. Let's go ahead and just show you an example. Let's say that we have our blog. We have these posts that show up right next to each other. Let's go ahead and just do that real time. Okay, so we have our posts right here. I'm going to duplicate this and create our third post. So I want all of these to float right next to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap these all in a div. And I'm going to give this a class of, maybe we'll call this column, or I'll just call it COL for short. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate that for each post. Okay, so after I've done that, if I save this and we reload, we're still going to get the exact same output because we haven't added any classes to that column. So let's add some classes to this COL class. Okay, so remember, if we were trying to set some CSS for an ID, we would use the hash sign. If we're trying to set the CSS for a class, we use the dot. So we'll say dot col, and maybe we want to give these columns a width, and we'll say 33%, and then we also want it to float left. Let's actually give this 33.3%. So let's save that, let's go back here and reload, and you can see that we actually get these boxes floating up here on top of the text. So what we need to do in that case is we need to do what is called a clear fix. So we need to clear the float. So after we float one, two, three, we then need to add a clear float right here. So we can do that by adding a new class of clear fix. You'll see this represented a lot in CSS. And we might want to add a new class here called clear fix. And we're just going to say clear both. So we want to clear both left and right. We could also just say clear left. And if I go back here and reload, you can see those boxes showing up below the paragraphs. But for this sake, we're just going to use clear fix to clear both left and right floats. So we'll say clear both. So if we reload, you can now see that we have our posts right here. And it doesn't look like that we have the titles. Well, the titles are actually white, so that would be why. So how about I change just the color default right here. And reload, and now we can see that. Although this does not look that good, 
So we could change H1 to have a color of white. Okay, so we're in business. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding in here inside of these posts. So we have one, two, three, and actually may even need to add a clear fix right above these columns. So how about I come up here and I add this div class equals clear fix. And we add that there. And if we go back here and reload, you can now see that we have home blog and then we have our post right here. So let's add a little bit of padding to this col class. If we go down here and let's say that we add padding of 10 pixels. You're going to notice as we reload this page that it actually breaks down because we just added an additional 10 pixels on top of 33.3%, which means that the width of all of these is larger than 100%. So what we need to do is we need to use a property which is called box sizing. So we'll say box sizing and we're going to say border box. So whenever we specify that we want the box sizing to be border box, we're saying that we want all the padding and everything else inside of this element to be included with the width. So if we save this, we go back here and reload, we now have our padding and then we also have our 33.3% for each column. So that's kind of the basics of using float. And once we get into Flexbox later, making these items aligned will be so much easier. We're gonna talk about Flexbox, we're gonna talk about grids and things that just make aligning elements so much easier. But it's important to know all of how everything works and how floating works before we get into more advanced things like using Flexbox. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about display. And we've already covered display a little bit, but I just want to talk about all the different types of properties that we can use with display. So let's go back to our box example. We have box right here and we have our box. So if we were to set our box to display, we could say inline block. And let's do that for box two as well. We'll say inline block. And we go back here and reload. You can see that the boxes actually line up right next to each other because we have specified that we want it to be a type of block element, but we also want it to be inline with the other content. Now, if we were to change this to just display inline and display inline, it's not actually going to listen to these widths and heights. If we reload, we have display inline and it won't actually take up the full width and height that you have specified because it's going to display inline and it's only going to change its width and height based on the content that's inside. And obviously we don't have anything inside of those boxes. So we do have a display block. We have display inline block. We have display inline and one more is display none. And this will actually hide the element from the page. So if I were to save this and we reload, we don't see that box anywhere. It hides the element from the page and then it also removes the white space. And while I'm talking about that, this might be a perfect time to tell you about visibility, which can be set to hidden and visible are your typical values that you will have for visibility. So if we were to say that we wanted this to have a visibility of hidden and we reload, you can see that it still takes up the white space. So it still takes up the white space, but it's not visible for the user. So based on your use case, maybe you want that to be display none or visibility hidden. Uh, it's up to how you want to display your website. Okay, last up is talking about position. And position is kind of fun. So by default, all of our elements have a position of static. So by saying position static, we're just saying that I want you to render this position to be static wherever it's at inside of the document. So we could then say position relative. And when we add a position relative, we can use a few more properties which allow us to change the top position. We say the bottom position, the left position, and the right position. So let's say that we want this to have a top of 10 pixels. And we save that and we reload. You're gonna see that it moves down 10 pixels. We could then say 20, and you can see it continue to move down. We could then change this to left. And of course, it's going to move to the left of 20 pixels. So by using this position relative, we can then kind of say, this is the relative position. Now I want you to move it from the top, this amount, or the left, or bottom, or right. So we have our position relative, and then we also have position absolute. And this absolute is saying that I want you to be positioned absolute to your container. And right now this box's container is actually the body of the element. So 
check this out. If I reload, we're going to get a left of 20 pixels. Let me change this to top of 10 pixels. If I reload, you can see that it actually ends up here, top of 10 pixels and left of 20. And that's because the body is the container element. And as you can see, the body takes up the whole page. So we're actually at the top of 10 and left of 20. And the final one is position fixed. And if I set position fixed and I reload, it's gonna look like the same thing happens, but let me actually move this up. And as you can see, if I scroll through the page, this is actually fixed right here. If I changed it back to absolute, it will be absolutely positioned, but as I scroll, it's not going to scroll with me. So if you set it to fixed, you can have it just scroll with the page. So that is the basics of using positioning. And before we close out the video, I do want to show you one more thing. And I want to show you that you can actually absolute position your element based on the parent container as long as it has a position of relative. Let me go ahead and jump into it and it'll make more sense. So I'm going to change our first box to have a width and height of 500 and I'm going to give it a position of relative. And I'm actually going to move my box two inside of box one and I'll modify the width just a little bit. Okay, so if I go back here and reload, you can now see that the box two is inside of the box one. And let's say that we were to set position to absolute for box two. And let's specify that we want this to be positioned to the right of zero pixels and top of zero pixels. So if I save that and I reload, you can see that it's actually going to the top right of the parent element. Let's go ahead and take off the position relative for the box. And you'll see what happens as we reload. It actually moves to the top right of the body because the parent element is not relative. So we can set elements to an absolute position that are inside of a position relative element. That's kind of a mouthful, but uh, if you understand what's going on, that you have a parent container that has a position of relative and the CSS of anything inside of it is position absolute, it will be absolute positioned to that specific container. So that is the basics of using CSS floats, display, and position. Uh, I hope you learned a lot through this video. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. But until then, I will see you in the next video.